Hi there, and welcome to Talk ETFs, ETF.com's weekly video series. My name is Sumi Roy, and I'm Senior Analyst for ETF.com. This week, I'm talking with David Schulhoff, who's the founder and CEO of Music LLC. David, great to have you on the show. Thanks a lot, Summit, for having me here today. So I wanted to start, David, by asking you about your new fund, the Music Global Music Industry ETF, ticker symbol MUSQ. Why should investors consider investing in an ETF dedicated to the music industry? Well, the music industry has become an attractive industry for investors to gain exposure in. According to a recent Goldman Sachs report, Music in the Air, the industry is expected to more than double to $131 billion by 2030. And the industry's growth is really attributable to the rise of paid streaming services like Spotify and Apple, the growth of content and distribution companies like Universal and Warner Music Group, and live music performances, which are shattering pre-pandemic levels and are expected to continue growing, companies like Live Nation and Madison Square Garden. So thematic ETFs like MUSQ have become popular over the last several years, and we're looking to capture all that growth and innovation. It certainly sounds like a growth industry. So music, as I understand it, is a global ETF. It holds a basket of global stocks. Can you tell us more about how music gets its exposure to the music industry? What type of stocks it holds in the portfolio, et cetera? So 45% of the companies are domestic companies. 55% of the companies are foreign companies. Uh, the fund has roughly 50 holdings across five buckets. Streaming, which is about 35% of the fund. Content, which is another 35% of the fund. Equipment and technology, which is about 10% of the fund live music and ticketing, another 10% of the fund, and then satellite and radio. So these are all companies uh, across the entire music ecosystem for investors to get exposure in. So David, I'm not an expert in the music industry by any means, but it seems like for a long time, technology was a headwind for the music industry. People would burn CDs, they would share MP3s, et cetera. Has that changed? Is technology now working in favor of the music industry? Obviously, AI is like the big topic today, not just in music, but across across many industries. In terms of music, AI is is revolutionizing production right now. Uh, it's boosting creativity for producers, for songwriters. It's giving them access to stems to create and produce new songs. So there's a, a lot of opportunity with AI. You do have risks. You have market share dilution and you have piracy, but you have that anytime you have new technology. But the, the benefits of AI far outweigh any of the risks right now. That's interesting you bring up AI. Are we ever going to get to the point where music is completely generated by artificial intelligence? So there have been examples of artists that have uh, used AI uh, to go into the studio, like Paul McCartney used AI to get John Lennon in the studio. In terms of like, uh, you know, a new act that's just AI, it doesn't really work because there's no live music component to it. So once you experience it as a as a song, maybe on TikTok or streaming, you might dance to it, but it'll evaporate pretty quickly. There's no story. There's no humanity. You can't go and relate to it. So those are those are fads that quickly, quickly fade. That makes a lot of sense. And finally, David, before I let you go, another technology that people were really high on a couple of years ago was blockchain. Do you think that blockchain is going to impact the music industry either in the short term or the long term? I think blockchain is something else to look at. What it, for, in terms of music, what it does is it cr it creates a direct payment rail between the between the seller and the owner. So just take an example: if you hear a, a song in a bar or a restaurant or in the radio, theoretically there should be one you know pay for play. So as soon as that song is played, there should be a direct payment to the artist, or at least the share that that artist or writer owns. So I think there are a lot of benefits with blockchain. Uh, we're already seeing that with, with, with NFTs. And so the digitization of music, we're just scratching the surface right now with the, with the myriad opportunities in the music industry. Um, you know, the last thing I'll say is music today is the most overlooked, under-monetized media asset. And that's not just me. That's JP Morgan as well saying that. Music is cheap compared to what you pay for other streaming services. Pay $11 today for 150 million songs. So you're, that's like 45% of what spot of what Netflix charges with very little churn. So I think we're going to see the streaming stock companies continue to raise rates every two to three years, which will, which will just mean more revenue for the streamers, more revenue for the content companies. And live music will continue. Look at this summer. The summer was on fire with Taylor Swift and Beyonce and Harry Styles and uh, Ed Sheeran. And fans are paying $700 to $1,000 a ticket. 
So they want to go see live music. They want to pay for music. Music consumption, by the way, is still 40% of what it was like 15 years ago when CDs were around. So consumers are used to paying more for music, which means that the market's going to grow and more people are going to consume music. Fantastic. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. David, thanks so much for your time. Thanks very much, Summit, for having me on your show today. Have a great day.